You're listening to Bobby Lika's Car Clinic. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Good morning, Car Clinic affiliates. Your Car Clinic minutes for the week of July 2nd, 2018 are about to head your way. So go ahead and press that record button. As always, thank you for broadcasting and listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Have a great weekend. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. Years ago, a small hard drive meant a trafficy physical commute. Today, it's the curse of telecommuting. But however you get to work, I'll pave the way with some timely maintenance tips when we come back. Oh, oh, oh. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the cool this summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A refrigerant with leak sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Whether you commute to work via old-fashioned blacktop or the Internet superhighway, automotive maintenance will give you more time for fun. Just remember, give me five. One, once a year, treat your vehicle to an annual inspection. Two, every two years, change brake fluid. Three, it's time for an oil service every 3,000 miles. Four, mark your calendar every four years for new radiator hoses. And five, Rotate tires every 5,000 miles. Now, take five away from your busy job to enjoy a cruise in your well-maintained vehicle. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. On missions, master spies synchronize their watches. In ballets, talented choreographers synchronize their dancers. And in one direction, manual transmissions synchronize their gears. When I come back, I'll tell you all about it. Oh, oh, oh. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the cool this summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A refrigerant with leak sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Like the Mission Impossible team goes forward by synchronizing their watches, manual transmissions go forward by synchronizing their gears. 
For smooth transitions as you shift, the rotational speed of one set of forward gears is matched by synchronizer rings to the speed of meshing gears. Reverse gear, however, is not synchronized, so it sometimes grinds in protest. Here's a hint. Don't force it. Just push the clutch in and pause a few seconds, then try it again. Now you're in sync with both your gears. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. I'm Bobby Likos with today's Car Clinic Minute. Sagittarius, Capricorn, Cancer. All sun signs that astrologists claim tell us something about a person. Cars have signs, too, that tell us if they're stolen. When I come back, I'll tell you all about it. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your A.C. is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the coolest summer. While you may need to eventually service your A.C. unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A Refrigerant with Leak Sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Blue nautical signs say smooth sailing. Yellow yield signs say slow down. Here are some red hot signs that indicate the used car you're considering may be stolen. The vehicle identification number or VIN number on the title and on the car itself don't match. And the engine ID number is scratched off. License plates or plate bolts are brand new. Ignition switches feel loose and keys are copies, not originals. Be aware, knowing these signs of red hot theft can help you keep your hard earned green. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. We all know beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But in whose eye would this scene be ideal? Being left outside, wet, and minus 45 degrees centigrade. When I come back, I'll tell you. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the coolest summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A Refrigerant with Leak Sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Burr. I'd hate to be a subject in the cold climate test facility in Manitoba, Canada, Ford's proving ground for the winter worthiness of its fleet of vehicles. Typical cold climate testing includes leaving vehicles outside overnight, sometimes wet, starting them in the morning and measuring engine performance, heater function, and interior controls. Yes, Cars, trucks, and their drivers are subjected to the most severe abuse Mother Nature can dole out. Volunteers, anyone? Not me. My favorite pile of white stuff is a big sand dune. I'm Bobby Likas. Likas, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with another Car Clinic Minute. James Dean, French food, playing hooky. All bad things that are oh so good. But like the little girl with a curl on her forehead, bad gasoline is horrid. When I come back, I'll tell you why. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the coolest summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A Refrigerant with Leak Sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. You may get crepe Suzette out of your system by exercising, 
but bad gasoline in your car system does long-lasting damage. As gasoline evaporates, it deposits harmful sludge which interacts with metals in your car's fuel system, causing gas to go rancid. Stale gas looks cloudy, smells like paint thinner, and gunks up your car's fuel injectors. Like too much French food clogs your arteries. So do what James Dean would. Go heavy on the Bernays sauce, but keep your tank filled with fresh gas. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour.
Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to three minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to one minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 30 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 10 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Welcome to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. If you have a car question for Bobby, call now at 1-800-264-5454, toll free from anywhere in America. And now, here's your host, Bobby Lycus. Thank you, Marty. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. If you saved gas, and you could say, think about this, whatever it would take to save gas, and there are some tips that I'm going to share with you, of course, after the commercial break, but they're easy steps to better gas mileage. So I pose the question to Fabio, and good morning, Fabio, uh, and good morning, Hannah and Jonathan, our, our good esteemed car clinic crew here. We're all on board, uh, coming to you from the center of the automotive universe, right here within a 15,000 square foot automotive service shop within the Gulf Coast of, uh, the United States, from Gulf Coast of Florida, in the United States, which is a really cool place to be. Well, not so cool this morning, but uh, we we are ready to take your call. Triple Eight Car Clinic. Hannah will take your call, put you in a queue, and I'll put you on the air. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic is brought to you in part this morning by O'Reilly Auto Park, folks. Summer's heat can be draining on your vehicle's battery. Rising temperatures can cause battery fluids to evaporate. So have your battery tested for free, that's right, free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. And if it does need to be replaced, the professional parts people there at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find the exact super start battery for your car or truck at a guaranteed low price. 
O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day. Your calls, when I come back, I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the cool this summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A Refrigerant with Leak Sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Motorrad, a longtime OE supplier, is the leader in automotive thermostats and fuel and oil coolant caps. Motorrad's state of the art quality control and functional testing systems ensure high quality, long lasting products. Motorrad delivers world class product development, providing all the parts and accessories needed to do the job right the first time, every time. Motorrad offers the best coverage of thermostats and closure caps in the world for virtually any vehicle and engine on or off the road. Motorrad, leading the way in coverage and service. Talking tunes? No, not the ones on your radio. The ones that allow you to reprogram your vehicle's factory computer without even popping the hood. The result is more power, more torque, and a better overall driving experience. We recently sat down with Jim McGinn, Vice President of Marketing for PowerTech. Jim explained how other aftermarket accessories can integrate with performance programmers and monitors. While traditionally known for adding horsepower and torque, the Superchips line of product can also accommodate additional changes that you may make to your vehicle including aftermarket tires and wheels to correct your speedometer, gear ratio changes for aftermarket gears, or even things like integrating with our on-dash display to activate your LED aftermarket lighting through our EAS power switch. We make the process seamless and easy and allow you to expand with additional accessories and use the Superchips product to keep things in check. And now through June 30th, you can take advantage of a $50 rebate on all flashback tuners from Superchips. Find your perfect tune at Superchips.com. That's Superchips.com. You're listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. If you raise the outfitters, I'm Tina. How can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Great. Which item? The cotton roll neck sweater, large. Okay. Periwinkle loaded or caramel? The caramel, please. The what? I'd like it in caramel. Oh, the caramel? Yeah, that's what I said, Tina. Actually, you said caramel when it's pronounced caramel. Can't we just call it yellow? No. Everyone knows the best part of a Milky Way. They just don't know how to say it. After all, it's our caramel. It's caramel. Ugh, that makes a Milky Way great. You start my morning. You stir in my soul. You warm my heart. Make me feel whole. Your aroma calls me. It starts my morning. Happy morning. Your name is Folgers Mountain. Grow now you're here. Aroma helps me wake, and the day is mine to take. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Okay, let's get started with uh, this hour's broadcast. Uh, I will share with you, uh, as time permits, your calls are, of course, uh, uh, take precedence over these uh, small tips that I give you. But uh, one of the most interesting uh, tidbits of information I'm going to give is about the oil life percentage monitor uh, in your automobile. And so whatever car you drive, uh, there more than likely is a, uh, a, a PCM or an engine control module or a powertrain control module, a black box that measures the number of miles you've driven and also knows the engine temperature and the conditions under which that engine ran. Like if you're just going back and forth to work uh, or if you're cruising down the interstate or you're towing uh, up a, a grade and towing a boat or what have you, that affects the longevity of the oil. So GM made some huge changes, as has uh, the automotive industry and all of the OEMs, uh, to see fit to put monitors so that y you, as the owner, don't have to be a mathematician or a, a scientist or a chemist to know the condition of your oil. But does it work? So I'll share that with you this week. And just for your information, this is information that no one in my shop knew and that yours truly did not know. And uh, we're in the business. So 
I doubt very seriously that you will be aware of this. Uh, also, I have some easy steps to get better gas mileage from our partners there at the Car Care Council. Uh, Rich White is the director, and he's the executive director, and he knows this, knows his stuff. So I'll share with you uh, a little bit about saving gas and what you can do and why you should do it. But first, we're going to go to Illinois and take a call from Greg, who was first in. Then we're going to go to Michael in New York and take his call. So I can see it's going to be a really busy hour. Let's get started. The number for you to dial is 888 227 2546. Good morning, Greg. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. My really pleasure. enjoy your show. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate you. Um, what I've got is a 2005 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter. Mm -hmm. It's a four-wheel drive. Got it. My wife uses it to pull a horse trailer with. Mm -hmm. She was backing in uh, to the slot where she was going to unload her horse at an idle, and it started this uh, making a knocking sound. I haven't personally heard it myself other than she took video of it with her phone, mm -hmm. and it was a knocking almost like a, it almost sounded like a diesel on there. Oh. Um, not sure what's, what might be going on, what I should be looking at. Uh, the knocking, obviously, uh, the, oh, not obviously, so I'll have to ask the question. The knocking, of course, coming, coming from the engine, dock, 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 dock. And and if you and if you put it neutral and raced it up, would it talk talk talk? Would it would it uh, the rhythm of the knock be associated with and and uh, relevant to the RPM of the engine, or do you know? Well, I, I she said that when she did rev it up, it went away and it and it it quit knocking when she revved it up, but. Uh, just the knock there at an idle when she put it in reverse to back it up, it started making a. A knocking sound. Well, here's there here's there are certain things coming to my mind. Number one, uh, it, it would it could be a flywheel, and it wouldn't have to be associated with the engine. Although the flywheel is bolted to the engine, but a flywheel under a slight load like that, as she was trying to jockey for position, you know, and that's not not always easy. On a, I've I've towed a lot of race cars, and backing is a is a, something that you learn over time. Uh, so I, I would say that I would have to hear it. And do you not drive this car, or have you driven this truck since then? And have you heard it personally? No. What she had, the week before she had uh, backed it in. She was pulling her trailer. She mm -hmm. said it died. So I said, "Well, I'll bring my truck over. We'll hook it up. You pull the trailer home. I'll drive the truck." Right. Nothing at all. Ran fine. Everything looked fine. Not showing any, you know, codes or anything. Right. Right. Uh, nothing odd. Ran five, backed it up, and so on and so forth. And then I said, well, I don't see anything wrong. I mean, I don't hear anything. And she took it over there again. And like I said, this time she took video of it so I could hear that. Sure. Not sound as though it were, you know, it was odd. But uh, it went away when she wrapped it up. She brought it home, same thing. I started up not doing anything. Uh it may be somewhat relative to it being once it's warmed up. I, I'm not sure about right, that. Right. Well, he, here's a point. Uh, if, if we don't know if this makes the same noise because she was backing up, uh, what if she had put the vehicle in forward gear? Did she try that? I mean, at the same time it was knocking. In other words, if it knocks in reverse and it's an internal engine and you put it in drive, it's still going to knock because right, it doesn't right. know if it's in reverse or, 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 or forward gear. So I, right. I, I guess that was my, 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 my question. And I, here's a question for you. So without, without knowing a little more information, I can't really properly and, and adequately and accurately, it's a better word, uh, advise you. So I advise okay. you to do nothing but monitor this. But here's what I, I do want you to do. Putting the car, uh, the truck, in reverse, and it doesn't have to be hooked up to the trailer. Uh, you can uh, hold the brake and call it. Do you know what a stall test is? is? A stall no, test? No. Okay. A stall test would be where you, in, with an automatic transmission, you put the transmission in gear, you put your left foot on the brake and hold it. You put your right foot on the accelerator and start to accelerate. Well, you know, you can, if you hold the brake hard enough, you can, you can push the accelerator all the way down. The car is going to go up 2,000 RPM, but it's not going to go anywhere. 
Of course, you'd burn something up if you, if you held it there a long time. But what that does, that allows you to load the engine, testing uh, things like motor mounts. And by the way, uh, sometimes uh, when you have a motor mount issue, you, that's the way we test it here. If, if we think there's a, a problem with a motor mount, say an engine is vibrating more so than you feel it in the, in, the, in the passenger's compartment, we'll put our left foot on the brake and put it in drive, step on the accelerator, and let's face it, if the engine is trying to turn something and you hold it from turning it, that engine's going to try to rip itself out of the frame. And that's what motor mounts do. They isolate the engine, but they also hold the engine in position. Uh, I know because I, I, I lost a, a, the driver's side motor mount, and my engine would rise under extreme pressure holding the brake until the engine cover would hit the chin or underside of the windshield cowl. I mean, and that's like two and a half inches away. It would jump up two and a half inches. So anyway, I said all that to say that for you, I want you uh, at a good proper time to stall test and you only stall test for no less than no no more than two and a half seconds and you don't nail the throttle but you give it moderate acceleration maybe a quarter of a throttle or an eighth of a throttle and then a little bit more and what you're doing is it's like walking up to a door that that it's hard to open. You put a little pressure on it. You put a little more pressure, a little more pressure, and then finally you say, "Hey, wait a minute! The door's locked. Unlock, unlock the door, Greg, and then you can open it." So, I want you to put pressure on the transmission by holding the foot on the brake with the vehicle in gear, and I want you to do that in reverse because she didn't have the foot on the brake, but she had the trailer that was braking and putting pressure to hold the vehicle you know, uh, t t from moving. So we're going to simulate the trailer being hooked to the vehicle, but with our left uh, foot on the brake, and then we uh, put it in reverse and we step on the, and it's going to say, hey, I want to back up. And, and the car says, I'm not letting you back up. And so what that will do is that will put a little bit of pressure on the pistons and the rods and the flywheel. If, if, if this is, you know, and this would be an odd duck if it were a flywheel, but that could happen. So that's what I'd like for you to do. And I'd like for you to do that a couple of times lightly and a little more severely and, uh, and not holding it for more than two and a half seconds each trial. Then if you make it knock, which I suspect that you could, Greg, at the right temperature, put it in drive and see if you can make it knock in drive. Once you can audibly make this event happen, then you could take it to a service shop and say, hey guys, let me show you what happens when I do this. Oh yeah, that's a that could be a so and so. You you see where I'm, the direction right. that I want okay. you to go. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Any, Any questions? No, no. Okay. I will try that and uh, see what happens, and I'll get back with you and let you know what I find out. Well, I'll, I'll be right here every Saturday from ten till noon Eastern time. I look forward to hearing back from you. That, thanks a lot. I appreciate your show and appreciate your help. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate the kind words. And, you know, we do have uh, other calls, Barbara and uh, from Florida and Michael from New York. We're going to go to Michael in New York after the break. Uh, I don't wish to start a conversation and then have to go through the break. So I'll just tell you that uh, I mentioned at the top of the show. So, Michael and, and Barbara, you stay there. And, and folks, now's a, the, the perfect time to get in versus waiting until the last five minutes of the program. 888-CAR-CONNECT, 888 2546 this is for the attention of all GM owners. If you drive a 2013 or later model, a younger car, GM car, it's important that you know about the oil life monitor reading. If you drive a 2013 or later, and when I come back, I'll tell you why this is a really important. We recently sat down with Johnson Controls Global Brand Manager Joe Meyer to discuss the advantages of AGM batteries. Joe touched on why many of today's vehicles are better suited for this technology. Let's hear from Joe. The attributes that make your vehicle a good candidate for an AGM battery really depend on the electrical demands that are placed on the battery within your vehicle as well as potentially the vehicle application such as start-stop. Most vehicles manufactured in recent years actually contain more than 150 electrical accessories 
including backup cameras, navigation systems, heated seats, even power windows, which are part of our everyday lives. Our AGM batteries are manufactured to meet these electrical demands. Additionally, if you have something in your car, such as start-stop technology, you need an AGM battery to help ensure you are effectively powering your vehicle during the stop event. Johnson Controls is the world's largest producer of automotive AGM batteries, which are precision engineered to meet the electrical demands we put on today's vehicles. Learn more at autobatteries.com. Car repairs get expensive, and most of us don't have spare money for them. When a heater core starts to fail, it can be costly depending on location, maybe $1,000 even. When a heater core leaks, it usually comes on gradually with a smell of coolant and a film on the glass that keeps returning. Common leaks are the glued seals on the plastic tanks. This represents a perfect opportunity to use K-Seal as it can be poured into the cooling system and driven right away. And K-Seal remains in the system, so it can prevent future leaks as well. We recently used K-Seal on a Honda to stop a heater core leak. We never experienced the smell of coolant, but we had to regularly clean the inside windshield glass to remove that film. It doesn't take more than a few drops from a leaking heater core to cause an unsafe film on the glass. After using K-Seal, it stopped. Find K-Seal at automotive retailers everywhere and get more information at kseal.com. That's kseal.com. You're listening to Bobby Lika's Car Clinic. The airlines like to have sales. Summer getaway sales, holiday sales, winter sales. Truth is, at any moment, some airline somewhere is on sale with low fares to great destinations. Travelocity knows exactly what's going on, who's on sale, to where, and when at over 700 airlines worldwide. We even have this nifty feature that lets you look at a calendar so that you can see exactly the days the great fares are available. Travelocity.com. Go virtually anywhere. AOL keyword, travel. <coughs> guess my temperature. It's 2 a.m. Go to sleep. Come on, one guess. I'm a 98. <coughs> higher. I'm higher at 99. You're getting warmer. Wait, I'm getting warmer. Cold symptoms keeping you from getting a good night's sleep? Get NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can sleep better to feel better medicine. Use as directed. One more guess. 100. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Tell her what she's won, Bob. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. We're going to go to the phones and take Michael's call. I did, before the program, mention that I had important information about oil life percentage monitors in your GM car. And this information could well apply to other manufacturers, but it was just yesterday that I learned this information. So I'll share that with you, but all, with all due respect, I'm going to take these calls first. And your call is important as well at triple O, triple O, triple eight. Gosh, it's right here in front of me. Triple eight, two, two, seven, twenty five, forty six. Michael from New York. Welcome to Bobby like his car. Clinic. Thanks for holding. Hi. Hi, sir. I have two questions. Two right. questions. Okay. I have a 2008 Lexus IS 350. Got it. So I had an engine warning light. VS, it says VSC. Yes. When we plugged it on, it was a P0017. Okay. So I, the car runs fine. No problems at all. I got into my mechanic. They said sometimes the sensors may be a little dirty. Well, the oil control valve, I even checked with the dealership, said sometimes it could be dirty and they clean, you know, clean those. But we did those. Mm -hmm. Still the lights on. Mm -hmm. But the car rides fantastic. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you have any insight into that. I do. Uh, the VSC, uh, the check engine light was on as well, right? Yes, it comes on together. They, they right, stay. right. Okay, the VSC is the secondary backup system with regard to uh, authority. What I mean by that is the sheriff rules the roost the deputies follow his lead, uh, and they work together in a, a good community like we have here. Uh, but in the big scheme of things, the deputies depend on the sheriff for not only leadership, 
but to establish the rules and to make those rule changes as needs change along the way. And very basically, the VSC, specifically in Alexis, uh, is a device that depends on the engine being in 100% operational condition electronically. It wouldn't know if it had a bad cam, but if it had a bad coil or a bad wire or uh, some other uh, deficiency, it would know that. So let's put it this way, Michael, you're the engine and, and I'm the, the vehicle speed sensor and the speed control. I'm the, the vehicle uh, safety and, and uh, I, I, I take care of the, uh, the, how much wheel slippage there is in the rain or I take care of the ABS in the, in, in the, in the rain when you're, you have a panic situation. But the only way that I can do my job, and because I'm just the deputy, is if you are 100% uh, on board and 100% fit. Now, why is that? So, so what happens, and, and I'll simplify, let's just say that you take the gas cap off and now the check engine light over a period of time, depending on the car you're driving, will come on and, and the check engine light will be on. Now that check engine light could be on for the gas cap off or it could be on for uh, a sensor or it could be on for a number of things. But the bottom line is whenever I see you stand up in class, you're the sheriff. Whenever I see you stand up in class and you have a deficiency, the first thing that I do is say, wait a minute, I'm off duty. I'm going to hold my hand up and I'm going to check out. And that's exactly what happens in Alexis. The VSC is, uh, has a, a propension to, uh, to check out. And rather than to be responsible for doing its job, it can't do its job, or at least it thinks it can't do its job from a programming because you're not able to do yours. And specifically, the throttle control is an engine management system. That's the sheriff's job. Uh, RPM uh, limitation, that's the sheriff's job. Uh, air fuel ratio, I mean, all of the performance of the engine is your job. I'm just a secondary, I'm the deputy, I'm the VSC, and, and you have one little thing wrong with your vehicle. As I said, it could be just the just the uh, uh, gas cap, but it's not for me to be blamed or, or uh, responsible for doing my job because part of my job, you do yours, which means you control the throttle under, let's say we're stopping a traffic light and you nail the throttle in the rain. Well, you wouldn't do that, but you could because what would happen, the wheels wouldn't spin, they'd start to spin, but then I would go to you and I'd say, hey, I'm spinning back here because I'm, I'm the deputy, and you would automatically, without the driver letting his or her foot off the accelerator, you would cut the engine back because it's a, it's a drive-by wire. So you control the power applied to the wheels that, by the way, the driver went overboard and you backed it off. But if you had a broken backer offer, if your motor controller was broken or the wire going to your motor controller had, was, was out of a threshold, you couldn't do your job, so you'd turn your light on. So the minute you turn your light on, I'd jump up with you and I said, hey, I'm out. Don't, don't count on me. So what I'm saying is that for all you Lexus owners, just because the VSC is on in conjunction with the check engine light, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the VSC. What, it, what that means is you get the check engine light repaired and then you reset those lights and then you drive the vehicle to monitor it. And then Michael, there's one other thing too. And there's, there are updates specifically with your automobile. We had one in, we've, we've done three of those this week. I say done, we, we actually connected three Lexus cars in our service shop this week to Lexus OEM uh, servers to determine if there are any updates or uh, reflashing of, of programs. And lo and behold, th there were. We put a battery in a Lexus this week. And in doing so, we had to reprogram the car to accept the new battery. And in doing so, we, the first thing we did was to hook it to the factory. And 
it says, oh, your computer, your computer programming is 37182. That went out a year ago. Or that, 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 we replaced 37182 with 37, 37195.2. You see where I'm going here? I see. Okay, so it is essential, specifically with new cars, that before you dive into a, a problem that is not a, a broken part, I mean, if you got a cam sensor and it won't run, that, that, then obviously you got you got a problem, or a crank sensor and, and the engine won't run. But if you have one of those erratic, or, or not so easy to pinpoint electronic issues, which is every car out there, then almost can be. Uh, then the first thing you do is you determine if there's an update to the reflash or the program, and you reflash it so that you're not dealing with a built-in problem, a built-in issue. And to that end, we have one lovely lady, uh, uh, just a fantastic customer who drives a, an, a, an SC, a 430, and brings it here religiously. And without fail, every time we put that car on the rack to drain the oil and filter and to inspect it, and we put it down on the ground, we reset the oil light, we put an oil sticker on it. She gets about a half a mile from here. This has happened four times, maybe maybe four, three I know of. She'll swing back by and she says, well, my VSC light just came on and we have to perform this. And this is a takeaway for you. We have to perform uh, a, a relearn on the center steering wheel. You say, well, what does that have to do with changing oil? Absolutely nothing. But it is my belief that Lexus uh, has uh, a monitor, you know. After all, when you pick a car up, the wheels are hanging down. If you if you're not on a if you're on a frame on lift hoist, you pick the car up, the wheels are hanging down. So when the wheels hang down, they're all out of alignment because they're hanging down, right? So when you put right. the, when you put the car on the ground, the wheels have the pressure. So you, they're not they can't they're still tucked under. They they can only untuck and realign themselves if you roll the car back 10 feet. You, you see why? Because right, of suspension. Yeah. Well, in the process of cranking the car up, the monitor says, hey, wait a minute, you're all pigeon-toed here. You've got a problem. Blink, blink, blink. And then, and then it says, warning, you know, there's a problem here. So we put the car in gear, we back it up, put it, bring it around the front of the building, deliver it to our customer. She gets two blocks and it says, I told you you're blinking, now I'm gonna warn you and the light comes on. She comes back, we reset that light, which had nothing to do with the oil, and fix the problem. Mm. So that may sound like a lot of uh, 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 you know, information to take in, but I wanted you to be aware, aware and it has to do with this, uh, this oil percentage monitor about the GM cars that I'm going to share. So I, I just say to you, the first thing you do is to uh, address the engine, forget the VSC, just forget that, and, and, and you can take that verbatim. Address the engine, uh, check engine light, s solve that, reset the codes, and that VSC light will go away. And if it has a problem, it is in and of itself, it'll come back on. But if it doesn't see an engine problem, it'll be happy and it'll say, okay, you can count on me, I'm along for the ride. You got it? I got it. Yeah, very interesting. Good. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It is very interesting, it's electronic. Yeah. I have another question on general maintenance. Okay. I was going to flush my um, coolant on the car. Okay. So, I, I just, so, so looking, I know, you know, whatever the capacity of, uh, you know, the antifreeze is in your car, you can never drain that total amount out because some of it, I guess, stays, you yes. know, within the engine. Sure. But you can, is it good enough just to take out, let's say, let's say it's a nope. five quarts and, nope. you know, you get out. No, nope. you have to drain 100 You can't drain it. it. You can't drain it. It's just not possible. The block, the block has cavities. You know, just like, uh, I mean, it's like the wall cavities of your chest and your lungs. You can't, you know, you can bleed out, but you're, you, you, can't, you, you can't remove all that liquid. So, so don't do it. Use a machine. That's where the professional comes in. Use a machine that, while the engine is running, pushes the old out and forces new in under recirculating uh, uh, activity so that you're assured that you're getting 95% of the old stuff out. That is the only way you can do it because 
number one, you can't drain it. Number two, uh, it, it, as you're flushing it, the thermostat's going to close because the engine's not hot enough. So you've got to have some machine that, that allows for the closure and bypasses the thermostat, and, and, and that's almost not possible. So really, there's no D, DI wire, honest to goodness way to drain coolant in today's automobiles, especially a Lexus. Michael, thanks so much for your call, and thanks, folks, thanks for listening to that, you know, a lot of information. When I come back, Barbara's call and information about the GM life. We recently sat down with Johnson Controls Global Brand Manager, Joe Meyer, to discuss the advantages of AGM batteries, and Joe touched on how vehicles have changed through the years and why this makes batteries with absorbed glass mat, or AGM, technology a smart choice. Let's hear from Joe. One significant trend we see in today's vehicles are the increased electrical demands that are placed on that vehicle. So these these range from features that improve the vehicle's emissions, such as start-stop vehicle applications, to comfort, convenience, and other safety features. An AGM battery is best suited to ensure that the needs of these different features are met. So if you think about it, 20 years ago, we did not have vehicles that drove autonomously or included heated seats or GPS systems or extensive infotainment systems. Our cars really have become our second home. So an AGM battery is really the best suited to ensure that your second home is working properly. AGM batteries help meet the electrical demands put on today's cars, and Johnson Controls is the world's largest producer of automotive AGM batteries. Learn more at autobatteries.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Waking up can be a chore, but morning's knocking on my front door. Know just what I'll do, put on a pot of Folgers brew. Mountain roll aroma hits the spot Helps me give all that I got An opportunity to start out smiling and happy The best part of waking up Is Folgers in your cup I'm privileged to be involved with Capstone Adaptive Learning, formerly known as United Several Palsy, for over 25 years. Since 1953, Capstone has provided quality care programs for persons with developmental disabilities like autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and intellectual disabilities. Dr. Sherry White with her team are dedicated to Capstone's clients, and 100% of your contributions stay local to serve those in this community. Go to capstoneadaptivelearning.org to see the difference Capstone makes. Technology moves at the speed of innovation, and today, that's lightning fast. So when you get your hands on the latest tech, don't forget to do the right thing with your old devices. Recycle them. The Consumer Technology Association and its members are making recycling your old tech device as easy as purchasing new ones. Just go to greenergadgets.org, type in your zip code, and you'll instantly find the responsible recycling location closest to your home. You'll also find lots of tips to simplify your recycling, like asking the store where you buy your new TV if they'll haul away your old one. Television sets, video game consoles, smartphones, tablets, they're all recyclable. Don't let them clog up your local landfill. Just visit greenergadgets.org. You're sharp enough to get the latest tech tools into your home. Now be responsible enough to get your old devices to the recycler. That's greenergadgets.org. And now back to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Lycus. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. What a very interesting, and I hope to you folks, uh, you know, there's a, uh, it, it, our program is designed uh, to help you better understand the nature of the very beast in, or not, not the beast, but the very automobile that you drive. It doesn't have to be a beast. Uh, so that, what, why? So you not can fix your car yourself, but so that you can better communicate with a, uh, a, your local car doctor. Uh, when you have and you understand sort of how something works and you understand that your car and all you really have to know is your car is doing something today it didn't used to do. That noise wasn't there, it wasn't, and it wasn't supposed to be there. If it, if it, if it were, it's, it would have been there since new. So that sort of separates, you know, but you never think about that. So when you do have this oddity that occurs, and nobody can find it, or when you go back to a dealer, and no flame here, and the dealer says, oh, well, they all do that. Really? Go out there and pick out one on the car lot, a new one, just like yours, 
even if it's a year younger, and say, hey, this one doesn't do it. Let's go drive it. So that really helps because what you're hearing and what you're trying to or able to, from a knowledgeable standpoint, convey to the service desk, because those guys know what they're doing, they know so much that maybe they don't hear what you're saying because you don't know how to, the trigger points. So that's really what I can help you with, those buzzwords. Let's go to Barbara and take her call. And then also Hannah is uh, standing by. She will take your calls at 888-227-2546. That's triple eight car clinic. Barbara, thank you for your patience. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thanks for taking my call, sir. Um, the CVX axle is leaking. What do I have to repair it, or or uh, if needs a new one, please? Because of the labor involved, uh, and and uh, and 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 what Barbara asked folks was, she has a Mercury that has a CV axle boot that is slinging oil. It's leaking. Well, that rubber boot, which is a 360 degree uh, rubber panty accordion panty that seals the boot and the oil in, that's about 35% of what its job is. The other 65% is to seal the water and the road debris and sand and grit out. So whenever you have, of course, you don't know that if any water is getting in because it's a sealed unit. You can't see inside, but whenever you see oil coming out, you know that it's leaking from the inside out. So if if a CV boot, if it's little panty, and there are two of them because there's an inner and an outer, if that boot is leaking oil out, it most assuredly has grit and damaging road grime that has forced its way in. You're driving down the road during a rain and you hit a pothole, the force of the water can be thousands of pounds per square inch and quite, quite honestly, I don't see how how some of the suspension uh, boots and rubbers uh, last as long as they do, uh, or tires with potholes and those sorts of things. But of course, that's what inspections are all about to determine that. So, Miss Barbara, uh, it would be my advice to replace the axle assembly because no one knows how long that boot has been leaking nor can anyone tell you what specific damage may have been done to the internal parts of that joint. And f at the top of the list, the labor to take it apart and properly clean it, which there's no such thing as properly cleaning it to make it as new, because it, it, would, take, it would take two and a half hours to take it apart, take it off the car, take it apart, strip it, clean it, lube it, dry it, and put a new boot back on, and that's just not practical because uh, you can replace that with a new, and I recommend you install a new uh, CV axle in your automobile. And I also, w with that being said, uh, I recommend that you would either call, and you can do this by calling, or you can go by any O'Reilly Auto Parts store, just drive in, Talk to the parts professional behind the counter and say, okay, I've got a Mercury and it needs a CV uh, joint. Tell me, uh, give me the name of a shop near you or a shop that you would recommend that replace this CV uh, axle assembly. And you can uh, then take your step, next steps from there. Uh, any questions? Because I have some other ideas. Um, I both want the cost there. Well, that I can't say because there are different there are different axles, there are different models, makes, and years. So what you want to do is you want to you have to have this when you do go, whether you go to a shop for inspection, or whether you go to a parts store to talk with a, a parts person, the VIN, because the vehicle identification number is the birth certificate of that car, and that must be <clears throat> available pardon me, must be available before the right part number can be applied, and that's essential to have the right price number as well. So let me ask you a question. How do you know this boot was leaking? Oh, I was told that. And by whom? 
Oh, I went to do oil change. Ah, okay. That, that's, that's great. So if you had not had your car in for an oil change, you wouldn't know that boot was leaking. So you could just keep be driving that car another year or another six months or what have you. Oh, is it safe to drive it, sir? Uh, yes. I, I would absolutely I would say that uh, a boot uh, you know it's safe to drive it's not safe for the joint you know but hey you got to replace oh. it anyway so so uh, I mean if it if it had been leaking long enough that severe damage you would begin to get a, a, a clunk 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 in, in the in the drive forward of the car so yeah I was told that well and, that, and that, it but takes that around two and a half hours to fix there uh, yes oh I, I would say yes two and a half hours maybe maybe, the, maybe yeah I mean, it depends on on the uh, it depends on the technical and mechanical ability of the technician and the proper tools. I will say this: the uh, on a uh, front wheel drive vehicle, the the nut that holds the axle and onto the front wheel hub uh, can have as much as 140 pound feet of torque to tighten it. So you don't take a, a tire wrench and tighten it. You got to have a torque wrench and a, a bar and you got to have the right tool. So uh, have a professional replace the CV axle and at the same time check the other side and the next time that you're in even if you go back and, uh, and maybe it's been a while and you're going to go back to the oil change ask them to show you where that's leaking so that you can understand because this is uh, it, this is not one of those uh, voodoo and black magic uh, events. This is a rubber boot. That's why it's called a boot, but it's a panty. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's a rubber diaper that seals out of the weather and seals in the lubrication that, uh, that allows the joint to flex. You got it? Um, you mentioned check the other side, the other side of the CVX axle I should check. Well, there are two. There's a driver's side drive axle and there's a passenger's side drive axle. And each Ooh. and each side has an in and an out joint, inside and outside. So there are four CV joints, universal joints we used to call them. But there are four CV joints in a front wheel drive vehicle. Oh, I was told it's going to take four hours to fix, four to five hours. Well, it depends. I mean, it depends on who's working on it and how many they've done before. Oh. So, you know, that's that's for you. I would recommend that you find a certified shop. And let me give you, you have a pen. Let me give you some information. Yes, sir. You ready? Let me know. Yes. Okay. Uh, A-S-A shop. That's A. <laughs> Apple, Sarah, Apple shop dot org, A S A shop dot org. A S A shop dot org. Yes, ma'am. You just put that in your browser. You just just go to the Google and put A S A shop dot org, and it will go directly to the Automotive Service Association's website, and then yes. you will say, "Find me a shop." In this, in this vicinity, and you'll have four or five shops that you could call from the comfort of your home and ask them when they might inspect your car that you understood and you've been told there's a CV boot that is leaking and you need more information. Now, here's what I advise you not to do. Do not call three shops and ask them for a price because I want a professional to look at that and you want a professional to look at that boot before you ask what it costs so that you'll know if it's one boot on the left side or one on the left and one on the right because the worst thing that you can possibly do is put a figure of repair, a price in your head and you go in and now you've got two for one and, and you don't understand why the price is twice or you've got one shop that says oh I can put that a regular boot on there you know th there's no way he or she could know what the condition of that boot of that joint was that's being covered you yeah. know I mean if you ever change the baby's diaper you don't just take the diaper off and put a new diaper on 
I, I, being a father, I can tell you, I got trapped a couple of times and had to change a couple of diapers. I wish it was as easy as taking an old one off and putting a new one on, but it's what you have to do in the middle. <laughs> That's the part I didn't like. <laughs> you got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, thanks. Okay, sir. Thanks a million. You're welcome a million. Okay, bye. Bye. That was graphic. <laughs> God, oh, my mind works in mysterious ways. Well, at least it still works. Here's a question from Frank T., uh, a Watch Bobby Live viewer from Sydney, Australia, as we speak. So the question, how does a PCV valve cause oil consumption if it has not played a role in causing physical oil leaks? Well, it's very easy. And I'll read the, the second part. Furthermore, does oil consumption occur when a PCV valve is stuck open? Yes, yes. Uh, so folks, we all talk about an engine being an air pump. Air is pushed into the, uh, the intake manifold past the valve to the top of the piston, and then it's pressurized. And then gasoline is added and that mixture of air and fuel is atomized and under pressure. And then a spark plug lights the match. And from there on, a lot of heat occurs, a lot of expansion of air, which some people think of as explosions. And it is that pressure and that heat and that flame front that forces the piston back down and the piston is hooked to the rear axle through the crankshaft and transmission and drives a car. So it is air pressure and heat and these little uh, boom, boom, that, that's why you got a bad muffler and you hear that going on in, inside the motor. So w what happens to all of that compression? It pushes the piston down. Well, some of that pressure goes by the piston and the wall, by the rings. It's called blow-by. That blow-by then creates pressure in the crankcase, just like you may have in your belly, gas pressure. So what does a crankcase do with gas pressure? If you do not relieve the pressure, it will blow out the oil seals. Many cars have had camshaft seals, Volvo in particular, uh, that leaked oil and the seal physically would not be bad but the whole cage that holds the seal would be blown out of place or misplaced just enough to cause oil to blow out. Why? Because there's ga gas on the stomach. It got absolute pressure in the bottom of the engine. So what do the manufacturers do? Well, before emissions came along, they put a standpipe on the back of the engine and let it come up about six inches above the engine and then turn and put baffles in it and go down underneath the car. So at a red light you could look onto the car and see the smoke coming out. That was actually oil vapors and pressure from the crankcase. Well that's stuff you can't breathe and you could smell it. You know what I mean? It's like the it's worse than the exhaust sometimes. Uh, like an oil leak you have, and oil leak gets on the exhaust manifold, and you can smell it. Now, here's what manufacturers did. They added, which is probably the most significant uh, of its day, uh, emissions relief uh, modification, they added a positive crankcase ventilation valve. This valve takes that pressure in a controlled manner and puts it back into the mouth of the engine. Of course, that causes black lung disease that I've talked about for a lot, and I'll talk about that next hour. I'll touch on it. But a PCV valve meters the pressure and relieves that pressure, and it puts it into the mouth of the engine where it is put back into the top of the piston and harmlessly burned away. Harmlessly, I say, because it doesn't matter once it's in the chamber. It does matter on its way there, and it, and it lubricates the intake manifold and causes problems there. If that valve is stuck open, then you have an intake manifold that is drawing pressure, and with pressure are raw fumes 
and smoke and raw oil and will cause that engine to leak oil because you're sucking it right into the intake. I wish I had more time. Well, I do. Another hour coming up. I'm Bobby Likas. Stay tuned. Like us. You're going to love us. This is Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is a copyrighted presentation of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written approval of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated. When your battery goes dead, everything can come to a stop. Don't take a chance on getting stranded. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and get your battery tested free of charge. If your battery does need to be replaced, O'Reilly Auto Parts can help you find the exact superstar battery that fits your car or truck at a guaranteed low price. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. This message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat, and apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable, but how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life? Someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel. Freaky, right? Well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. If you're familiar with the Kulsifid section of the newspaper, you probably understand this message quite well. You see, in the Kulsifid section, everything gets abrupted. Consonants, vowels, prepositional phrases, the very building blocks of our language are thrown right out the window. And that makes it difficult when you're trying to sell your car. You've got a limited amount of sps to work with, and by the time you abrivet the description of your car down to a couple of fragmented sentences, it sounds less like a car and more like a bluk sedan with like new condition le mules. No wonder more people are selling their cars through eBay Motors. They can post unlimited text and photo descriptions, and with a nationwide marketplace, they're likely to sell it for more. Plus, booth parties can be covered by eBay's vehicle protection program. Buyers are happy, sellers are happy, and no one's abrivating. eBay Motors, a better way to sell your car. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Likas Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycas Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour.
Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to three minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to one minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 30 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 10 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Welcome to Bobby Lyka's Car Clinic. If you have a car question for Bobby, call now at 1-800-264-5454, toll free from anywhere in America. And now, here's your host, Bobby Lykus. And good morning. Welcome to this hour of Bobby Lykus Car Clinic. For those of you who have just tuned in, this is our second hour of the day, our broadcast. We're, we come to you every Saturday from 10 till noon. This is our 27th year. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh, another thing, too. Uh, our center of the automotive universe location uh, actually is from within a, an all-digital acoustic systems uh, designed, uh, well, we, we designed it and they built it, studio that's located within a 15,000 square foot automotive service facility. Our service facility just won for the ninth year in a row, best of the bay. I'm so proud of uh, our team. Uh, how did they do that? work, hard work, attention to detail, customer care, customer care. We do care and we run a transparent service shop. That's that's something that you just don't see uh, in many businesses. 
Bobby Likas Car Clinic is brought to you in part this morning by Johnson Controls, the world's largest producer of automotive AGM batteries, which are precision engineered to meet the electrical demands we put on today's cars. Learn more at autobatteries.com. That's autobatteries.com. Learn more about your car right here when I come back from the break by calling 888-227-2546. Your vehicle a little sluggish, throwing off trouble codes? Take action with Berryman's B12 Chem Tool. Using HEST or High Energy Solvent Technology, Berryman B12 Chem Tool Fuel Additive dissolves gum, varnish, and carbon deposits in the fuel system to help restore lost power and peak performance. But don't take our word for it. Brian was experiencing hesitation on his Accord when he recently hit 50,000 miles. After just one can of Berryman B12 Chem Tool, no more hesitation, and he can already feel the get up and go. Find out more at BearmanProducts.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Folks, cold winters can cause batteries to lose their cold cranking amps and ability to start a vehicle. Make sure you have your battery tested and, if needed, replaced with an AGM. AGM batteries maintain more charge over time, better suited for start-stop systems, and if your battery tests low, make sure you check the alternator as well. An extreme cold followed by extreme heat can diminish battery life. Frequently jump-starting your battery or letting a vehicle just sit idle for days at a time can also slowly reduce your battery's power and effectiveness, risking a dead battery. The Bosch S6 High Performance AGM battery is more resilient to the constant demands of start-stop systems and vehicles with high electronic demands. If you're like me, always charging multiple devices, listening to the radio, enjoying all the technology and electronics in your vehicle, upgrading your battery to a Bosch AGM unit is a must-do to keep your vehicle running at its best and ensure you have battery power, always. To find an AGM battery for your vehicle, go to BoschAutoParts.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Another lending success story from LendingTree.com. Car dealers like playing games. They play percentage points, they play markups, but I don't like playing with my money. So I got my auto loan through LendingTree.com. I filled out one simple form, a marketplace of banks and lenders competed over it, and I got four offers back within hours. After all, the car buying game is a lot easier to win when you're holding all the cards. LendingTree.com. When banks compete, you win. For additional information and state license disclosures, please visit our website located at LendingTree.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And now, back to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic and your host... Bobby Likas. Okay, let's get started with this hour of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. I, I would ask you to think about uh, this coming week and uh, realizing the time of year and the heat. And uh, if you're planning a vacation or just planning a road trip, uh, what condition is your automobile? Uh, and if I ask you, you know, has this been a good car for you? Then what would your answer be? Uh, you know, the car that you drive, has it been a good car for you? What would your answer be? And then my second question would be to you, how do you know? It, it's as though, and, and that's a really good question. I'll tell you why. Uh, when someone gives you advice about your automobile, including yours truly, ask them, how do they know? Because Advice, free advice is exactly worth what you pay for it if it's coming from someone who doesn't know what they're talking about or has not had the experience and not, has not had the opportunity, multiple opportunities, to be wrong. Because it is only through being 
and having experiencing a series of wrongs that you know the difference between and the absolute. Although there are darn few absolutes, uh, black and whites as we call it, you know, this is either this way or it's not, uh, especially with the automobiles that we drive. Uh, I had a gentleman to say that, gosh, I don't want to re replace all those parts in the front of my car. And, uh, you know, you guys said it needs ball joints and shocks and what have you. And <clears throat> he said, you know, I, it's been a year and I'm still driving it, and, you know, and it's still still rolling. True. So one day, one of the ball joints will break and it won't roll just because it shows wear and you didn't elect to fix all of the things that were wrong with it doesn't mean that not wrong. It just means that it will roll until it can't roll any longer. And that will happen at the worst possible time if I know cars, and that I do. So I'm going to open the phones up now. I want to share with you this hour about the oil life monitoring system on your car. And I would put this out there to all of my colleagues. Can you tell me if there is an absolute time or mileage in a GM car to where you change the oil regardless of the oil life monitoring percentages shown? And there is an answer to that, and it is a specific answer. And I would love for anyone in my industry or any one of you folks out there, a do-it-yourselfer or just a car owner, so when you got a GM car, when do you change the oil? Let's say that let's say that you have so x thousand miles on the vehicle, and you have eighty two percent life left in the oil. And you're going to take a a five hundred mile trip this weekend. Should you change the oil? Well, that depends. So I'll share with you uh, when you should, regardless of what that percentage says a little later on in the program. And it's really important that you know this because it's not a given. It's not a given. No one in my shop knew it, and we know what we're doing. But no one in my shop, including yours truly, knew this until yesterday. But in the meantime, let's go to Nebraska and take Jim's call. And I invite your calls at 888. Hannah will take your call and put you in the queue, and I'll put you on the air. 888 -227 2546. Jim, welcome to Bobby Likas Carcanet. Thanks for holding. Yes, thank you very much for taking my call. My pleasure, sir. Uh, this is about the Chevy Volt. I've talked to you several times, a couple of times anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, I, I cured my own problem. <laughs> and how and why, I have no idea. Okay, no, wait, 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 wait. Oh. You're talking about the gas mileage issue? No, I'm talking, I'm talking about the battery mileage issue okay so so give us a 30 second overview because okay. there are new people that are tuned in and this is an ongoing conversation between the two of us and it was a and it really had you between a rock and a hard place and the dealer and the dealer says well that's the way that's the way it is it runs as it's supposed to be but your mileage went from x down to less than x after they put an update reflash in your car correct yes Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I leased the, I leased the car. Uh, it uh, just when give you a, would charge just the car. Give us, just give us the numbers. Oh, okay. Um, it went from fifty three miles on the battery down to forty one miles on the battery. Right. And what I did to, and, and I don't know. Well, I do know why I did it by observing. Uh, <laughs> I would plug the car in, let it charge up, and I don't drive the car every day. And uh, as soon as it was charged up, I would unplug the car, hang the, the charger up, and uh, I'd take note that it said, you know, 41 miles is what I was going to get on the battery. And uh, But after two or three days, I plug it back in. And on that second charge, it, the battery would move up. Instead of 41 miles, it would show 43, 44, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I took note of that. And actually, when I went out and drove it, I got 43, 44 miles instead of 41 miles. Okay. And I kept doing that. I would uh, uh, charge it up, unplug it, let it set for a period of time, a day or two, 
plug it back in, and I kept noting it, it would go back up. I am now back up to 54 instead of 53, and I physically get 54 miles uh on that charge, mm-hmm. and sometimes more depending on the, you know, whether I'm driving in hilly, hilly territory or whether there's, you know, more stop, stops and starts. Uh, but I, I called GM. I told them this. They had no idea why. It took me almost a year to learn this on my own, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, no one can tell me why. I have a, an idea. It's called adaptive learning. And See, that's what I thought, too. <laughs> I, I, I believe that sincerely. Now, I mean, seriously, uh, uh, uh-huh. I, I have, uh, I, I bought a machine recently. I, I didn't buy it, uh, but I have a, a machine that has adaptive learning on it. And uh, it is a, a CPAP machine. Uh, and some 20 oh, years ago, uh-huh. I tried one, and I felt like, uh, Sigourney Weaver in the Alien, w- w- with this thing on your face. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever been there, but there are a lot of men that's out there that snore and what have you. But uh, I-, I could not and would not use it. Fast forward 20 years, and thanks to a, 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 one of my good doctors and good friend, Henry Porter, who is brilliant, by the way, he said, I, I, you need to go to a sleep clinic. And I went through all the steps and what have you. And this past Monday, uh, I tried this latest, newest uh, 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 machine. This past Wednesday, I dove into the uh, internal settings of the machine, where you're not supposed to go, to determine the uh, humidity deliverable and what have you, and uh, the pressure thresholds and the exhausting thresholds, all of the things that that you that this machine does on its own and there is an adaptive humidity control that determines the humidity of the room and the temperature of the room and the temperature of the air hose that is delivered to your to your face your your nose and it is there to maintain a, a level of humidity so that you're not dried out with this machine pushing air into your into your right. lungs. Mm-hmm. It's called an adaptive. And Jim, there's also a fixed setting. When adaptive doesn't seem to work, you can put it on a fixed setting. And by using a fixed setting, if the hose begins to get moisture build up, you know you've gone too far. It's the darnest thing, and, and I'll tell you why it's relevant to a car talk program. My master ASE technician and shop foreman, Johnny Bars, attended the latest HVAC automotive school this week. And he and I spent 30 minutes talking about the latest technology on HVAC that now has an adaptive learning program in a car. And get this, I'll just touch on it. You're driving, you've got the air conditioner on, you put the window down, automatically the air conditioner will sense that the window is down through the computer connections online in the car, and it will switch the air conditioner over from vent to recirculate because it knows that you don't need outside air because you put the window down, you got outside air. It's called adaptive programming. I say to you that your Volt had an adaptive feature that is very common in electronics, and but it has to have over time and over the right set of circumstances. And I congratulate you, you nailed it. And that should be th- your response and your, uh, what you've discovered should be sent to all GM dealers nationwide. There's that break again, Jim, stay there. Bill, you stay there and folks don't touch your dial. This car repair spotlight is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. At Car Clinic Service, we work on every make, car, and small truck. Ten years ago, John P. first came to our shop with 6,000 miles on his 07 Tundra for an inspection and synthetic oil change. Today, his truck has 453,000 miles and runs as new. 
This week, we replaced John's starter. Big job as Toyota buried it under the right side exhaust manifold. So better use quality parts the first time because nobody wants to do this job twice. John's Tundra has delivered 11 years of nonstop service thanks to our team and John's proactive care. Whenever John's truck comes in for service or repair, we call the pros at O'Reilly Auto Parts because they have quality parts, a terrific warranty, and we want to keep John happy long term. Whatever you drive, find a shop you like, have them service it every six to 7,000 miles, and ask for O'Reilly Auto Parts. This car repair spotlight is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Talking tunes? No, not the ones on your radio. The ones that allow you to reprogram your vehicle's factory computer. The result is more power, more torque, and a better overall driving experience. Recently, we sat down with Jim McGinn, Vice President of Marketing for PowerTech. Jim specifically touched on performance benefits. The Superchips Flash Pack's performance tuning can impact your vehicle's mileage, towing performance, or its optimized drivability while daily driving. The tuning is designed to eliminate excessive downshifting to improve overall drivability, and you can manage things like active fuel management, adjust for particular shift points or shift patterns, shift firmness, and torque management. Additionally, you can also read and clear diagnostic trouble codes, adjust your speed and rev limiters, and correct your speedometer for aftermarket tire and gear ratios. And all of this would come with a two-year powertrain warranty that comes standard with the Superchips Flash Pack. Find your perfect tune at superchips.com. That's superchips.com. You're listening to Bobby Lyka's Car Clinic. From Geico Auto Insurance. When calling Geico to switch your car insurance, you will not need acetaminophen, naproxen, indomethacin, ibuprofen, a cold compress, an on-call acupuncturist, or any other pain remedy. In 15 minutes, you could save 15% or more. If it were any more painless, you could do it in your sleep, which is theoretically possible since we offer complete 24-hour service. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, 1-800-947-AUTO. Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. When you purchase the latest TV, tablet, or smartphone, don't forget to do the right thing with your old ones. Recycle them. The Consumer Technology Association and its members are making recycling your old devices as easy as buying new ones. Just go to greenergadgets.org, type in your zip code, and you'll instantly find the recycling location closest to your home. You'll also find recycling tips, like asking the store where you buy your new TV if they'll haul away your old one. Don't let your old tech tools clog your local landfill. Just visit greenergadgets.org. And now back to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Lycus. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Glad you tuned in. And every Saturday from 10 till noon, uh, we come to you live from the center of the automotive universe. So there you have it. Let's go to Bill and uh, take his call from Florida. Hey, that, that's a, a hometown or at least a home state for me. We're located uh, here in the center of the automotive universe in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, beautiful downtown uh, revitalization. Uh, just a, a really great place to live right now. One of the fastest growing, uh, I think, in the nation, certainly on the top 10, maybe. I won't, don't quote me on that, but at least it feels that way. 888-227-2546 is my number, and uh, I would invite you to call in. I'm gonna share with you information about the oil life monitoring system, some easy steps to get better gas mileage, talk a little bit about Ford's uh, intentions to launch a self-driving car service at scale by 2021, but first, Bill, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Hi, thank you. Thank I've you. got a problem that's been going on for uh, quite some time now. Uh, sometimes when I start up uh, in the morning, I'll drive about a block and it acts as if uh, I turn the key off. I put it in neutral, hit the starter, starts right up, and I won't have that problem for uh, several weeks it doesn't throw a code sometimes i'll be driving along at say 35 miles an hour and it has a real rapid miss again there's no code so code it for me fuel pump relay i'm sorry <laughs> fuel pump <laughs> relay fuel pump relay it's the easiest where do i find that that fuel pump relay is uh, in its receptacle located in the black fuse box under the hood 
near the battery as memory serves me. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's right by the battery. The black box takes well, the cover why you, off. Why are you asking me? If, <laughs> what? What? You knew where, what? <laughs> well, I didn't You're know that's where me. the uh, yeah. fuel pump relay would be. Yeah, so sir. what is happening to the relay? Well, uh, that's a supposition, and that's a, a guesstimate, but... Uh, it, it, you, you see, you, you said something that, that really was very important. You, you don't have any check engine light, and this is not a, a no. I mean, this is an ongoing problem, and you, you don't have right. a check engine light. So the computer, and it's an OBD2, so it's a, it, it has a lot of brains. The computer doesn't see an electronic uh, deficiency where a misfire or a coil uh, or a crank sensor. See, a crank sensor would cause the same thing. But if a crank sensor was the culprit, probably, and there's always a probably because electronics, there's no, uh, you know, I mean, the only thing I know for sure, electronic, if you take a hatchet and chop a wire into it, it ain't going to transfer a current. But right, other than right. that, other than that, it could, it could be a high resistance and yada, yada, yada. So rather than get into all yeah. that diagnostic jargon and take a half of, of the program to share with you what all the could be's, I, I think the first thing to do is just, replace the fuel pump relay and by the way uh, bill you might just pull out the relay itself and look at the prongs and see if, if you can see any uh green stuff or corrosion right, right. And, i mean you know that you know what that looks like if you've got any uh yeah experience. in florida we get a lot of corrosion yeah yeah for sure and i'll tell you i i like i don't like i always treat uh, the prongs, whether they're round or blade or whatever, uh, when I plug in a new relay or when I plug together a male-female connector or when I replace yeah. a tail light socket or a, or a bulb yeah. in a tail light socket, I always like to, and I used to do it uh, on the larger bulb, it's like the 1157, I would just take uh, the white lithium grease that is waterproof and I would just like you uh, dip a, uh, a you know a, a cracker in into the dipping sauce. I would press the uh, the metal part of the bulb uh, about a eighth of an inch into the white lithium because it would be a clean, fresh jar. You take the cap off and you don't reach in yeah. and put it on your hand because you don't want to put it all over your hand. You just take the little bulb and dip it in there. Now you've got a, a blob, a small blob of this uh, white lithium. Uh, anti-corrosion lubricant and put it in the socket and I did that I bought uh, a pair a friend of mine and I bought two sea dews and a double trailer and the first day yeah. that we had the trailer because we were backing it into the bay the salt water I, I treated the bulbs mm -hmm. and four years later when we sold the trailer and the sea dews I had never had a bulb to go bad or a socket in that trailer even though I backed it into the salt water. So I can do the same with the prongs on the relay? Absolutely, and you can do that for, for just for grins. You can do that to say, well, I'm gonna make sure, and I will tell you, I can't tell you how many times, especially early on, before we had the smart computers, but we had a computerized yeah. car, I can't tell you how many cars that we fixed that we couldn't find the problem, so in the process of discovery, we would unplug, inspect, treat and replug every connector we could under the hood and voila the problem would go away that's the bad news is the problem would go away the good news is the problem would go away i say the bad news because i really want to know which plug we fixed it and there's in there and you know yeah. that's just the, my nature and and it's good to know as you go yeah. along anyway that that should help you and it gets you to the next step you always feel free to return me a call in, in another week or two if that doesn't fix it we'll take it up from there I sure appreciate Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate your kind words and Bye. your confidence in me. We're going to go from Florida now to New York, and then we'll take your calls. Well, Hannah will take your calls at 888-CAR-CLINIC, 888-227-2546. Terry from New York. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house. Oh, nice meeting you guys. Uh, I, I just got enlightened to your show oh, cool. today, and it sounds like a, a, funny, a really fun show. It, it is. It is. I mean, I've been here 27 years, and just for you to know, uh, our studio is located inside an automotive service shop, some 15,000 square feet. We're celebrated March the 11th of this year. 
which is 2018, 47 years. Uh, oh, and, and, we, and Yeah, thank you very much. But what, what can I do to help you? Okay. Um, 07 uh, Honda CRV um, EX, uh, four cylinder uh, Japanese. Um, it, uh, the AC stopped working yesterday after I made like a, a you know, pretty uh, hard uh, U turn. <coughs> um, I replaced the relay uh, for the clutch uh, a little while ago and uh, it didn't uh, uh, initiate the. Uh, the clutch, mm -hmm. and also the fan is working, mm -hmm. and I rotated the clutch manually with a pole mm -hmm. uh, so that the compressor is not uh, frozen, and also the um, low side, uh, the pressure is like really high. Um, you know, when I put those generic um, uh, refill kits, when I hook it up to it, it just hits the uh, maximum point real fast, you know, mm -hmm. so I didn't want to... Uh, connect anything else on it you know well let me ask a question terry you, you, you say the pressure because i was i was see there is a pressure switch that when the pressure is below the lowest threshold that tells the system there's no refrigerant and because there's always static pressure within the system so when the system uh, falls below the threshold of the static pressure not operating pressure, just overnight pressure. You know, at resting, at, at resting heart rate. Okay, so right, right. When when that happens, the system says, "Oh wait, we're out of uh, refrigerant." So if he, if Terry runs the air conditioner, it w it'll burn the compressor up because it could be low of oil as well, because oil leaks out with with refrigerant as well. So we'll disconnect that circuit so the compressor won't kick in. So right, right. I suspect that. That was a pro I suspected that was a problem until you made the statement that low pressure is, is out of sight. But for a low yeah, pressure, it's hitting to be, the maximum. Well, maximum. It's the maximum uh, pin. And you know, what the gauge? Pin that prevents it. And what gauge are you telling me you're using to determine maximum? Uh, let me just grab it. Two seconds. He's got his real gauge there. Okay, I got oh, it. It's, okay, uh, so so is this? Uh, let, me, let, 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 wait, let me ask the question. ID. Let me ask this question. The gauges that you're holding in your hand are they air conditioner low and high pressure gauges with a manifold? Uh, no, I, I also have that also. But I, I uh, after I hooked this up and I saw that it passed the warning. It passed 100 psi on the low side. Um, it is you know, impossible. I it is impossible to have 100 psi on the low side uh, in a system that the pressure can't exist where you have a leak. So I'm assuming, and that's assuming that you have a leak because you told me, well, back up, you told me that the compressor would not kick in. Is that is that yes or no? Correct. Okay. So if the compressor would not kick in, you cannot have statically 100 psi of pressure because the system uh, that means that you probably have about 400 psi in, in, in the, the pop-off valve would blow at three or less. So uh, here's what has to be done as a first step. So forget everything that you think you know about air conditioner systems. Everybody, okay. here's the first step. You'll have to have it secured to a machine that will evacuate the system to zero pressure. Right. In order to make sure that there's no air no, I mean, I mean to start. So that's the first thing you have to, you know, it, it's like going in for blood pressure and you got 175 over 100. Hey, you don't, you don't do anything but get that blood pressure down first. You don't diagnose what's causing it. You've got to get it lowered. So for you, in, in other words, you could do this. You, you could just hook up your gauge and then open the gauge and let it blow the steam off. Not that you'd want to do that because you don't want to put refrigerant into the atmosphere. But the bottom line is, where'd the 100 pounds come from? Right. Did you add, have you been adding to this system? No, not at all. Not no. at all. It's been working, it was working fine. Um, it could have been a little colder, but uh, it was working fine. Uh, well, oh, then, okay, all right, Let, let's, let's all, all diagnostics and all conversations aside, Terry, your to-do 
Monday morning, take it to a shop, have them hook up the, their machine and draw the system down to zero, which will, by the way, along with drawing the system down, will tell them, because see, see they'll capture whatever refrigerant is in the system. And if it holds 1.2 pounds and it's got 0 0.8, they're, they're, that's good. They'll put back in it the 1.2 and then check the pressure, the operating pressure, and then you will have the right base from which to make an educated repair decision from a professional. You got it? Right. right. Okay, okay, Thank my you friend. So much. Thank you for calling, yeah. Have a great weekend. That's a, that was a, a really great exchange because at least there's a baseline that we can get started. And I'll take your calls at 888-CAR Clinic when I come back. Your car and your life have a lot of moving parts. And your car's battery is what keeps it all going. Here's something to keep in mind. While all batteries may look the same on the outside, it's what's inside that matters. So be sure to choose a battery with power frame technology inside. It's stronger, more durable, and keeps you going longer. That means you can count on a battery with power frame to be there start after start. Here's another reason to feel good about choosing a battery with power frame inside. It's manufactured using the latest sustainable processes. You're moving fast, and you don't want anything to slow you down, especially an unreliable battery. So the next time you need to replace your car's battery, make sure you choose one with power frame technology inside. Look for power frame on the outside and know there's true strength on the inside. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. More than one million wild animals are killed each year illegally. Poaching is a major threat to our country's wildlife. I'm Tom Barry. I'm an actor with a desire to preserve living space for wildlife. The Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust does just that. Works with private landowners to protect wildlife to preserve natural habitats. To learn more or to work with the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust, call 800-729-SAVE. That's 800-729-SAVE, or visit wildlifelandtrust.org. Thank you. Did you know 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it? The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. She, too, was surviving kidney disease. and She showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. Now you know. We're a land of cynics. We don't believe anything anymore. You know why? Because we've been told we've won a million dollars, that it's new and improved, that it slices and dices, that our favorite singer is still alive, that we'll be prosecuted if we cut off the tags, and of course that everything is back with a 100% money back guarantee. So when we hear the words customer service, we don't believe it. Travelocity isn't surprised if you're a little skeptical when they say they have excellent customer service and that there's actually a pleasant face behind this website, a living, breathing person with a supercharged computer full of answers, someone who's willing to help when you get lost, and most of all, someone that will actually pick up the phone when you call with a question or a concern. Customer service is just another example of how Travelocity puts you in control of travel. Chances are you'll never have to use it, but it's good to know it'll be there if you need it. Travelocity.com. Go virtually anywhere. And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thanks for tuning in today. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is brought to you in part by Motorrad. Your first choice for vehicle thermostats and caps. You can learn more about their products and industry-leading application coverage at MotorRedUSA.com. That's MotorRedUSA.com. And I want to share with you, and I will a little later in the program, an interesting story about an ongoing Honda Civic automobile that one of our customers brought to us recently that we've repaired and started the initial repairs and still has an overheating problem. And I think Motor Red is going to help our customer for sure. I'll fill you in on that a little bit later. I'll open the phones back up. Honda will take your Honda. <laughs> you see what I've got on my mind, a Honda. Well, it, we've, it's, a, it's a car that we've got had in the shop. We don't have it today. 
and uh, it has an overheating problem. I'll go ahead and just tell you the story. So, a yep. customer comes into car clinic service with a Honda. It's overheating. You drive it six blocks, boom, it t pegs the gauge out. Bring it back. Here's a gaping hole in the in the in the radiator. So we replace the radiator. Well, that's not rocket science, right? No. But we also replaced the thermostat. Even though the owner had replaced the thermostat, you know, I don't know how long ago, I'd, I'd say a, maybe a week or two or six months, who knows, before uh, they brought it to our shop. But we replaced the thermostat because it was bruised. That's what we say when, an, when a thermostat reaches, an engine reaches overheated condition, and you put a new thermostat in it, and then it still has that the same problem because it wasn't the thermostat, you've actually bruised possibly the new thermostat. So when we service a cooling system because of overheating, whether it's water pump, thermostat, or whatever, we replace the thermostat as well, along with that repair. So we service the cooling system, replace the thermostat, lo and behold, went out and drove the car five miles. Excellent, no problems. Huh, we got this one solved, right? No. Customer calls back, said, well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is I went all the way to my house, which is like 25 miles, and it didn't overheat, but it threatens. It threatens to overheat. Uncomfortable. I said, well, it helped me understand that. And sure enough, the gauge would not go and find its happy medium. The gauge would find its uh, right place in life where it used to run for this owner, but it would creep up and creep up, and then they'd slow down and and it would come back down. Then we'd speed up, and it, but it wasn't, it wasn't attached to it being the temperature reading. Lo and behold, uh, brought the car back, and we cannot find uh, a known, obvious head gasket leak. But what we chose to do was to add K seal, and you've heard me talk about K seal, and so we actually took the K seal, and it works in minutes. We added that to the cooling system. We drove the car 15 minutes, which for us was about a, a half hour drive because in traffic that 15 minutes turned out to be a, a half hour, which was even better, I think. And then delivered that car back to the customer. And it has been, this is our second week, and the report to date is no further problems. So we've got our fingers crossed, and what we think and what we believe is there was a pinhole, or there is a pinhole that could still be there, and K-Seal has sealed that hole and saved this customer, made us look great, a lot of money on engine repair. I mean, the car had a lot of miles on it. It's an older vehicle, and in order to fix the car and fix it right, we've got to take the motor apart, start replacing parts, and x-ray the head and all of those things that go into proper updating of an engine that has had a history of overheating and quite candidly we don't know how long the owner drove it with it maxed out anyway but I do know this it, it I have to thank K seal and so next time you have a, an automobile that it's questionable you say well this car is not worth a lot of money it's not worth repairing well try try K seal it's a great product, and just for your information, it's the number one multi-purpose coolant leak repair in the world. And it fancy it made it right here to Car Clinic. Okay, let's move on. Again, I'll invite your calls, 888-227-2546. But this is what I've really been wanting to share with you all morning long. And so I'll just open up this forum about oil life monitoring system. So how does the system know when it's time for an oil change? Electronic sensors throughout the drivetrain and information about engine revolutions, temperature and driving time are sent to the car's computer. The data is run through a mathematical algorithm that predicts when the oil will begin to degrade. The light comes on well in advance giving you time to get the car serviced. That was the premise and that's what General Motors stated when they first came out with and introduced oil life monitoring systems in the late 1980s. In fact, in fact, Matt Snyder uh, was the product and project engineer at GM's Fuels and Lubricants Group, and he quote, and I, he said, and I quote, "We are very confident in the accuracy of the system." End quote. 
The average recommendation for the system for GM is about 8,500 miles, he went on to say, but he said that the longest oil change interval he was personally aware of was at 17,000 miles in a colleague's car. Fast forward by 2010, now this was in the late 80s, but by 2010, 14 out of 35 manufacturers had incorporated oil life monitoring systems in their car. I said all that to say just one thing, and that is information that I learned this week about GM's oil life percentage monitors. So if you drive a GM automobile, listen up. If, if it's a 2013 or later model year GM, it's important that you know about the, the monitor's reading starting in 2013 going forward. So if you've got a 2013 or newer GM car, all GM cars were programmed for the oil percentage light value to drop it to zero when the vehicle reaches 7,500 miles. So, so think about this. You're going to take a trip, and your car has 7,450 miles on it. You've, you've changed the oil, you've made a couple of quick trips, but you look at the oil expectancy and it's at 82 percent. 82 percent. You're only going uh, maybe 500 miles that weekend. So you leave your house at 82 percent at 7,450 miles and you drive 50 miles. And you stop to get a Coke or whatever and you get back in the car and that 82% oil life monitoring is at zero. Well, that's a panic situation. How is it possible to go from 82% GM to zero in 50 miles? Because every GM that was manufactured from 2013 forward has a fail safe and the oil life monitor falls to 0% at 7,500 miles. I didn't know that. And it's really interesting because we've actually had GM cars, multiple GM cars in, that it showed 88% at 7,000 miles or 88% at 5,000 miles. And and the owner says, well, you know, do I really need it? You know, I've got other things. I don't, I don't have the time today. No, you're fine. You're fine. It's, it's 5,000 miles on the oil. You can go seven or eight. You can go 10 if you really, you know, with synthetic oil. I mean, you know, I don't do that in my car, but you could. You're not going to destroy the engine. That's a false sense of security. It's inaccurate. And, and I, I, I want to change that policy. As of yesterday, we did change that policy in our service shop. What I'm saying is it doesn't matter what your oil percentage life expectancy or leftover is remaining in your GM car. If it's a 2013, when it reaches 7,500 miles, it's going to drop to zero. So it's not you. You didn't say, man, that must be, I, I swear yesterday that I had 82% of oil life. Now I've got zero and I've only went, I've only driven 55 miles. So that's the reason for that. So for those of you that are in the business, I think that would you'd be well advised to remember that because people come to us for uh, our expertise and our knowledge and they ask us questions and we give them advice to the best of our knowledge. But you know what? I didn't know this and I, and I would never have guessed why an oil life monitor would fall from 82% to zero percent in this, well, let's say the car had 7,499 miles on it. That means you could just drive it around the block a couple, 10 times and bingo, the light goes, what do you do to my car? I came in 82%, you put a headlight bulb in it and you road tested for a brake noise and you found out that it had a clip on the brake, you put a new headlight in it or a bulb or whatever and now I'm at home, I just got home and my oil monitor says zero, and it was 80% when I drove in your shop this morning. Think about it. It not only can happen, I bet it does happen a lot. Anyway, 888 Car Clinic is the number for you to call. Gas prices, as I do, try to every, every week. Sometimes I don't get to the prices. 
the gas of price uh, the gas of price lane the price of gasoline <laughs> that's funny uh, is two dollars and eighty three cents average for the United States uh, and that price is lower this week than same time last week in every region across the states. However, it is higher than same time last year in every region of the states. In fact, the highest is 50, 61 cents in, on the West Coast, less California. In California, it's 58 cents. So it's about 60 cents on average higher that it was this time last year uh, on the West Coast, and it's uh, $3.40 on the West Coast. Here on the uh, New England, it's two eighty-five. dollars uh, Anyway, average is two eighty-three. dollars So how do you get better gas mileage? Well, fancy, you should ask me that, because I have some easy steps to better gas mileage that uh, a courtesy of our partner, uh, the Car Care Council, and you would do well to remember the car care, well, just remember carcare.org. That's a little easier, I think. Carcare.org. And you can go there, uh, and you can actually, which I have done, and I have all the facilities I need here to monitor my own automobile, but I love it when I'm not responsible and I can put that off on somebody else because we take the responsibility for your car. So I just love to have somebody do that for me. And I, I do, I depend on car care council because i went to carcare.org i put in my vin and the year and make and model of course the vin tells everything but the the mileage and i put in the mileage and now i get interval oil change coming to me automatically saying bobby it's time to change your oil and it's kind of neat uh, the last time that happened was at uh, 54,000 miles and yes the car has 55 and yes i did service it and I went in and ticked it that yes, that service has been done. It was really easy to do, but it was kind of it was kind of great. It's like it's like you taking care of your family, and all of a sudden you walk into your home, your mom's of the world, your dad's. We just you know we had Father's Day back you know uh, uh, this month, earlier this month, and you walk in and somebody says to you, sit down. We're we're going to do the dishes. We're going to cook dinner. We're going to take care of you tonight. Really. And so that's a good feeling, and it's great to have a good feeling. And yes, it's great to have an even better feeling when it comes to automobiles, which is my hot button. So here uh, is a list, courtesy of the Car Care Council, for checking uh, and providing and performing things that you can do uh, that will increase mileage. Check tire pressure. Oh yeah, I knew you'd start with that, Bobby. Well, yeah. Uh, you keep the tires properly inflated. You can improve the gas mileage by up to, and this these numbers come from the Car Care Council, 3.3%. Okay, use the right motor oil. What does that mean? Improve gas mileage by 1% to 2% by using the grade of motor oil recommended by the manufacturer. If your vehicle calls for 020, put 020 in it. If you go to a fast in, fast out lube center, you need to know what viscosity oil they're putting in your engine. If you come to my shop, you need to know what we're putting in your engine. Ask, what, what, what oil goes in my engine? If somebody looked at you with a deer in the headlights look, that's not good. And if somebody says off the top of the head, oh, I think it's, I think. I don't want you to think. I want you to tell me what is the right viscosity for my engine based on the people that made my car and designed my car. That would be the OEM. Number three, replaced clogged air filters. Replacing clogged air filters on older vehicles can improve fuel economy and will improve performance and acceleration on all vehicles. Did you hear that? And I'm reading from the Car Care Council from the original document. Number three, replace clogged air filters. Replacing clogged air filters on older vehicles can improve fuel economy. Well, what about new ones? Well, there's a computer that adjusts the air fuel ratio. So clogged air filters are not the kiss of death, but if you want the performance ongoing, they, they really are. You need to have them replaced. Number four, check engine performance. Keep your engine running efficiently and improve gas mileage by an average of 4%. Number five, fix it. Addressing a serious maintenance problem like a faulty O2 sensor can improve mileage by up to 40%. Those proactive vehicle maintenance 
uh, according to Rich White, the executive director at the Car Care Council says, we'll save you dollars and add life to your automobile, and I agree. Go to carcare.org for additional information and set your calendar, make a date, next Saturday, 10 to noon, right here from the center of the automotive universe. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. This is Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is a copyrighted presentation of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written approval of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated. Berryman's B12 Chem Tool features HEST, or High Energy Solvent Technology. Helps maximize one tank cleanup of intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers. But don't take our word for it. Gary's Mercury Sable was just running awful and throwing trouble codes. A local technician said it might cost as much as $600. So first, Gary tried Berryman B12 Chem Tool Fuel Additive, and now it runs like new with no trouble codes. Learn more about Berryman products and their HEST technology at BerrymanProducts.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Bobby Lika's Car Clinic. If you raise the outfitters, I'm Tina. How can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Great. Which item? The cotton roll neck sweater, large. Okay. Periwinkle loaded or caramel? The caramel, please. The what? I'd like it in caramel. Oh, the caramel? Yeah, that's what I said, Tina. Actually, you said caramel when it's pronounced caramel. Can't we just call it yellow? No. Everyone knows the best part of a Milky Way. They just don't know how to say it. After all, it's our caramel. It's caramel. Ugh, that makes a Milky Way great. You start my morning, you stir in my soul. You warm my heart, make me feel whole. Your aroma calls me, starts my morning. Happy morning, your name is Folgers, my 